for young kids, math is the uh, strongest predictor of success at school. It is actually a stronger predictor than reading, than social emotional skills. Um, this, you know, dry arcane subject that most people think is, is, is not very important, many of us struggled in it, turns out to be this very strong predictor of success. And there's research across the board showing it, it has implications for people's financial health, their physical health, and so on. It's a far more important subject than people imagine. Um, so to, to come back to the question I was talking about, why, why we had so much trouble eradicating poverty, um, or, why, or are we looking in the wrong places? This is a case study we did in Toronto that I write about in my book. Um, we tested kids coming into grade five on a standardized test of ability, and this bell curve shows the distribution of the marks. We cut it off at the ninth percentile because that was the lowest mark, and the highest mark was in the 75th percentile, and the average mark was in the uh, 54th. And this would represent about a three grade level difference between the top students and the bottom students as early as grade five. So how many people here teach or are involved in schools? So are you seeing that in your school? You know, as early as grade five, you might see a three grade level difference between the top and bottom. Yeah? It's cer certainly every school, I, and I, I see the principal here who's uh, one of my heroes. Um, Every school I visited and on three continents has this kind of distribution. In fact, this is a very good private school where parents are paying money to produce that difference, paying quite a lot of money to produce that difference. So what does that say about our society? And, and may, is that possibly pointing to an invisible problem that we can't see if people are willing to pay money to produce that difference? Because it really suggests that we think that there are inherent differences between kids, that there are always going to be weak students in math and strong students. There's no better indicator than that economic indicator where people will put their money. It says very, very clearly that we believe that hierarchy is natural. There's nothing we can do about it. And, you know, those differences get worse and worse. Uh, by grade six, less than 50% of Ontario students pass the provincial test. It, it just gets wider and wider, that gap. So that's the invisible problem I'm referring to. I call it intellectual poverty. And intellectual poverty doesn't, in the book, it, it doesn't just mean not, you know, when you're impoverished intellectually, it, does, it just doesn't mean not having access to school or to good teachers. Because this is an elite private school where you can still see a, 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 a huge difference between the top and bottom students. Um, so intellectual co poverty cuts across all social classes. And I think that's why we've had so much trouble dealing with it. 